Howdy there, everyone. Today, we are talking about how I stay motivated to eat well and stay active. But first, uh, I just want to chit chat. And if you want to skip the chit chat, I'll leave the timestamp somewhere on the screen or down below in the show notes if you're listening on podcast of where you can skip to to get to the what you think is good stuff, but I think it's all good stuff. So I am going to eat in between talking to you guys, but don't worry, I'm not going to do any ASMR mukbang because that would just be rude, but um, it's seven o'clock and I got home from work and I wanted, I had the energy to record a podcast for you guys and I knew if I sat and ate, I would lose the energy and also I would lose some of the natural lighting that I want and so we're just gonna work it in all together but don't worry there will no be there'll be no chewing in this podcast but happy June everyone what am I eating so um I kind of don't want to tell you because it's not very exciting it's kind of weird I just kind of threw together some things I had in the fridge so I have some beans And I was going to do black beans, but I didn't have any canned black beans. I only had dried black beans. And I was at the point in my day, Sunday night, it's Tuesday, when I didn't have the time or the energy to reconstitute dried black beans. And so I just picked, I just am using the pinto beans that I had a can of. And then I had made pulled beef, I'd made a beef roast in the crock pot and shredded it and I'd seasoned it with steak seasoning and that was so good. And so that I have some shredded beef. I have a handful of spinach because nutrients were just kind of sneaking sneaking them in wherever and eat your greens. And then I have a little bit of mac and cheese for a carbohydrate and deliciousness. Will they all work together? I don't know, but it is what it is. If you guys are new here, hi, I'm Rachel, and this is I'm Bringing Healthy Back, and this podcast, I just like to share encouragement of and hope for healing your relationship with food and your body image, because I have a background of disordered eating, very restrictive eating, and binge eating, and I just, I want ever, people who are struggling to know that there's hope, and have someone to walk with them, them through this really tough season of their life. And be a reminder that if you keep fighting, and I know you will keep fighting, it will come to an end and you will overcome your struggle. So with that, I also like to talk about things that I enjoy um, and things that are important to me. And eating well and staying active are important to me. And I think they should be important to everyone else. Your health has such an impact on your entire life. How you sleep, how your day goes, your mood, your emotions, your ability to be focused and attentive at work with your friends, with your family, your ability to stay active into your older age if God permits you and blesses you with that. Your health is, it's not everything, but it is everything because you can't do anything without your body and without your mind. So if you're not healthy, it's going to be impacting your everyday life. And it may not just be affecting you personally, it may affect the people around you, whether it be professional or personal relationships. So I think it's important that everyone take an audit of their health and how they're eating and how they're staying active if they are or aren't staying active and really decide how important it is for you. And your lifestyle choices are yours. You make those decisions. No one is going to make them for you. If you are mentally and physically capable, it's your choice. So how do you stay motivated to continue to make healthy lifestyle choices? Motivation is fleeting. Motivation is a feeling. Feelings are fleeting. Feelings can be false. And... So you cannot rely on motivation, but that you could call that semantics. How do you keep the drive and reach the state of being disciplined to continue to eat well and stay active? 
one thing is to consider the consequences. What's going to happen if I continue to make poor food choices, make poor lifestyle choices? You're going to have that instant gratification of eating the highly processed sugary fatty foods that there's nothing wrong with eating some of the time, but you don't want that making up the majority of your diet. And then another consequence of not moving your body is Google it on the internet. It's everything. If you don't use it, you lose it. You're, if you're not continuing to stay active, and I don't mean you need to be lifting weights, but muscles atrophy, they waste away if they don't get used, and they not that may not seem to affect you in your teens, your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, but once you start getting older, you gradually start to notice and talk to anyone in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, they'll tell you, like, things start to hurt, things start to uh, slow down and not work the way they used to. And staying active can help, not guarantee, it can help you maintain your independence, your mobility, etc. longer. And so you've probably heard this saying in physics, or even if you didn't take physics at all, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Now... I don't just mean I don't mean that to go just go along with stay active and you will stay active. I mean that also to say an object in motion. You, the object, the motion, your decision making. As you continue repeatedly to make a certain type of decision, it becomes easier to continue to make that decision again and again good or bad. So it's not always easy to make the best decision for yourself. We like to have the easiest, most fulfilling, the most, the most satisfying decision at the quickest time possible. So an object in motion, if, to, if you take a marble and you put it on an uneven surface that has some sort of slope, and you push it in one direction, it's going to start going that direction, but then it's also going to take the easiest path possible because gravity is pulling it. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go in a straight direction, but it's going to keep going in the easiest path that it can find. Without discipline, that is how we humans tend to work. We like to find the path of least resistance. And so for your diet, perhaps, if you're not someone who likes to cook, your easiest decision making when it comes to food choices is prepackaged convenience foods or drive through. So Pop-Tarts, cookies, box cereal, uh, frozen dinners. I'm going to wait for the dog to stop squeaking her toy drive through meals, and those tend to be packed with salt and fat and sugar and tend to not necessarily be the most nutrient-dense. Now, that's not to say that you can't find any convenience foods that are decently balanced, have a good amount of nutrients, and don't have too many less healthy ingredients in them. But suffice it to say, when you go out you have to be disciplined in making a decision that benefits you for the long term. Because I'll be honest, if I go to McDonald's, I want a McFlurry. I don't want a subpar salad. But that's just one example. And there's nothing wrong with eating convenience foods on a case-by-case basis. Again, what are you deciding to choose? And how often are you eating the not very nutrient dense options. And if you're not really sure what I mean by nutrient dense foods, Google it, but it tends to be whole foods, fruits, veggies, uh, grains, uh, potatoes, um, unadulterated foods. 
eggs, fish, meats, beans. Basically, when you go to the grocery store, what's like around the edge and... You can get lots of canned fruits and veggies, uh, canned fruits in 100% juice, frozen fruits and veggies, yogurt, dairy products. Those are examples of more nutrient-dense options, but not going to get into that. You can disagree with me. That's fine. But how to stay motivated to make healthy food choices. I grew up in a home where I was blessed that my parents brought me up with a lot of whole foods. We rarely ate out, a lot of home-cooked meals, uh, not super fatty, greasy, fried foods. Um, There was always a vegetable at dinner, uh, lots of oatmeal and eggs for breakfast, but again, we would have French toast and pancakes. So I wasn't like in a health nut household, um, but I did, there was a good balance of, my mom would bake cookies, but then we would also have chicken and potatoes and veggies for dinner, that that sort of balance. Now I recognize that not everyone was brought up with that. So it's kind of inherent within me that that's how you eat. But also I spent over a decade struggling with my relationship with food. And so there's a lot of unhealthy, like low calorie is what is better, which is not necessarily true, okay? A Diet Coke, zero nutrient value, value. Some people could argue negative nutrient value, if that's even possible. But if you have, this is just an example, like a whole fruit smoothie with like little to no extra added sugar, um, and you have a lot of other ingredients in there. Whole fruit smoothie versus Diet Coke. Zero calories in the Diet Coke, however many few hundred calories in the smoothie, potentially, but the smoothie is bringing you nutrients that the Diet Coke has nothing of. So coming back from that aside, it's important to educate yourself on, I think it is important to understand caloric value of food. I'm not for calorie counting, but just having an understanding, um, understanding what whole foods are, understanding how to balance your plate, how to balance your snack, all stuff that you can do a quick Google search and it will point you in the right direction. I'm not an expert, I'm not a professional, That would be my first step. Then, for me personally, I struggled with binge eating so much for so long, and I ate a lot of unhealthy food during my binges, very salty, very sugary foods. And even now, if I'm not not having a binge, but if I make poorer food choices over a duration of time, a lot of sugar a lot of pizza, if I skip vegetables and fruit for a long time, you can physically feel the difference. Sluggish, my skin tends to break out more, not necessarily sleeping the best, lower energy, etc., etc. It's going to be probably a little different for everyone, but overlapping symptoms for everyone as well. So it's making the decision, how do I want to feel? And you, everyone eats every day, unless you're fasting for one reason or another. You have to eat food every day. You have the option, for the most part, to choose what you're going to eat at least three times a day. So sometimes you're going to have to be the parent to your inner child and say, I need to include a vegetable in this meal. For the nutrients, for the fiber, I know it's good for my body. That's the, that's what, that's like the biggest theme. I know it's going to benefit me. It's going to benefit me today. It's going to benefit me this week, this month, this year, the rest of my life. It's building these small habits that seem, are seemingly insignificant sometimes in the moment. But again, your lifestyle, what kind of lifestyle do you want? Do you want to feel good? Do you want to have energy? You can get into the vanity of it. Do you want to look nice? And then carrying that into the rest of your life. So you're not always going to be motivated to include a vegetable in your next meal. But you have to decide every day, what do I want for myself? And that can be hard. And it's okay if 
not every meal, not every snack is going to be perfect. Not every day, not every week is going to be perfect. You're going to have holidays. You're going to go on vacation, but it's deciding to get back on track. And that can quote, getting back on track can be like a negative saying, but it's just getting back to a diet that makes you feel good. A few more things that can happen if you're not eating well, you're not eating the right foods, you're not eating a balanced diet is you might be bloated. You might get constipated and that doesn't feel good. And sometimes it doesn't feel good because your clothes don't feel right. It doesn't feel good because your belly hurts. And when your belly hurts, when you have pain in your body, that affects you. It distracts you. So again, consequences to not educating yourself and taking the steps to decide to eat well. But going into how not having, but getting into how your diet affects staying active, it's hard to stay motivated to be active when you don't feel good, when you feel sluggish, when you don't have the energy. And some of this, sometimes these two things tie together. Sometimes You can't break one without also including the other. So you can't always wait to have the energy to go work out. And you don't have to go work out. You don't have to go make it this big deal at the gym. You can walk around your neighborhood. You can do some yoga or some Pilates in your living room. You can ride your bike, go for a swim. Don't underestimate the power of those simple exercises. Now I've heard some people say like, I don't know how many people agree with this, but like walking isn't an exercise. Like, okay, go do it and tell me that doesn't help you. It's not necessarily going to make you like lean and buff because you have to tear, tear your muscles to, and feed them in order for them to grow bigger. That's just the reality of how it works. But you don't need to be lean and buff to be healthy. If you want to get lean and buff, go for it. My goal is a long-term vision. I want to be active and mobile and independent for as long as I possibly can. So that doesn't mean that I need to be squatting hundreds of pounds, bench pressing hundreds of pounds. That means that I need to be taking care of my muscles and my bones. And for me, I like weightlifting and you can do your research, but I think weightlifting can help keep your bones strong. And then I like yoga because it helps in my joint mobility and it keeps my muscles loose and it keeps me mobile. So that keeps me stable and it helps prevent injury. So think of it. When you get old, people lose their stability. They lose their mobility. They become dependent on other people, especially if they get hurt. It just happens all the time and sometimes it's inevitable. But what can you do for yourself now and continue to do for yourself for the next decades to help your future self? So how do you stay motivated to stay active? You really just have to decide. It's a mindset thing. It's a vision thing. It's so easy to be in the here and now and I'm so busy. I don't have time. I don't need to exercise. Like I'm not, I'm not overweight. I don't think about it. It's too hot. It's too cold. All these are excuses. And I understand there's weather. There's busyness. I understand that. But those things are all temporary. And those are the things you're just making other priorities. So are you saying that being active is not a priority? And that may be the case, but how does that make you feel like, I know I need to be active. It's just not a priority. When will it become a priority? Again, I'm coming from a background where my family went for a walk after dinner just about all the time. Not in the winter, because there was snow, but almost all the time. And in the winter, I was skiing. So, and... I got involved in sports, so I was always active. And then I had a kind of a toxic mindset about working out uh, when I first started working out on my own outside of sports. Part of it was like it was vanity. 
But part of it was I saw it as a way for me to help heal my relationship with food. And so there's been ups and downs about like my why. Why do I work out? And right now, these past, I don't know, nine months, um, I moved into a new house. I adopted a dog. I've been kind of busy. Um, I have two YouTube channels. Um, I have a full-time job. And so it's been hard for me finding a balance between, okay, I have rooms to paint. I have work to do. I have videos to record and edit and upload. I have Bible study. I have church. I have this. I have that. And I understand there are people out there who are much busier than I am. I understand that I'm not the best at my time management, but the blessing with having the dog now is I am dedicated to taking her for a walk every single day. So I'm not always getting a 30 minute yoga flow in. I'm not always getting 45 minutes of a lifting session done at the gym, but I'm staying active every single day. So at the same time that I want you to make the decision and prioritize staying active on a regular basis, it doesn't, especially to start out, especially in the realities of life, it doesn't have to be every single day of every single week. It doesn't have to be intense workouts. It can be gentle workouts. It can be intense workouts. It can be a mixture of them. It may ebb and flow with the seasons of life that you go in. You have a new baby you're not going to the gym, but maybe you're going for a walk every day. You, you do have the time and the resources, and so you sign up for group classes. You are super busy at work and you're traveling. Maybe you find some YouTube videos that you can do a workout in your hotel room, or maybe your hotel has uh, a free weight, um, a little, a little uh, gym at the hotel. Maybe you are shy and not yet comfortable going to a gym, but maybe you can ride your bike or again, you can do a workout at home. It's the small, it's making those decisions every day, understanding that every day, maybe you won't get a workout in every single day. You might not be super active every single day, but making a decision like, okay, I'm going to pick three days this week and I'm just going to move my body. I don't have to get all sweaty, but it can just be a walk. And again, going back to how to stay motivated to eat well and exercise, you have to have a why. You have to have that long-term vision. You have to decide every time you get off course of where you want to be. I get it. Like sometimes I, I'm eating like mac and cheese and pizza and burgers and a lot of like meat and carbs, but I'm not eating a lot of fruits and veggies. When you get off track of like including veggies, they start to lose their appeal. Okay, you're not alone. You're like, eh, veggies, I don't want I just don't wanna. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't always wanna either. But you make the decision to. It's like your child, your niece, your nephew, your friend's kid, they don't always want to eat their veggies either. But you make them to an extent, to whatever extent you can. It's because it's important. You know it's important for them to be healthy. And it's important for you to be healthy. You need to take care of you. Because again, if you're not taking care of you, if you aren't feeling well physically, if your mind is fuzzy, if you're tired, if you're sluggish, if you're bloated, if you're constipated, if you're sore because you're out of shape, and then you mowed the lawn, you're like, wow, heck, I'm out of shape. Or Someone wants, you want to go on vacation, you want to go hiking, and you're out of shape, and you're going to go zero to 60 to go hike the mountain? Again, it doesn't have to be these intense, big changes, but it's the small little decisions we make every single day that make up, make up our lives. So you decide, what do I want for my future? What do I want for my tomorrow? When I get older... Do I want to have people take care of me for the last 10 years of my life or can I make it the last two? And I understand we can't always make that decision. We don't always have that choice. But 
me, my goal is to be make choices day in and day out that help me in the long run. So for me, because that's all, all I can tell you is what I, what helps me, what made it, how to stay motivated, to eat well and be active. I like when my body feels good. I like when I'm not bloated, when I'm not constipated. I like when my skin is clear because when I binge or when I eat a lot of pizza and candy, but a week later, get some blemishes that start popping up and I'm not a fan. I have more energy. I sleep better. I feel better. My clothes fit better. Why do I want to stay active? Not gonna lie, there is some vanity in that. But in parallel, I want to be strong. I want to be able to lift my dog if I need to carry her out of a burning house or something. She's like 65, 70 pounds. I want to be able to take care of her because I'm, I'm, I'm who's responsible for her. I want to be able to mow my lawn. I want to be able to carry all my groceries in at one time. I want to have the endurance to go walk on the beach for an hour and not get too tuckered out walking in the sand. I want my bones to be strong and my muscles to be strong. And I want to, I like muscles. I do. I, like I want to have some muscle definition. That's, that works for me. <laughs> like I enjoy weightlifting. Um, I want to be able to be flexible. I want to minimize my risk of injury because I have strong joints and I have, um, fluid muscles they're not super tight and they're not going to pull easily if I have to make a quick a quick movement I want to I've already I've made the decision it's it's that mindset it's making that decision that I want to be active for the rest of my life I want to be able to go skiing in the winter and minimize my injury because I have strong, strong legs and I have strong bones and strong joints. So the intensity of skiing, my body can, can put up with that. If God blesses me with a long life, he does, if he doesn't come back before I get old, I, and I don't end up with some sort of disease that I don't have a control, any control over, I want to be one of those 80, 90 year old women who is independent because I'm physically well. That's how far in advance I'm thinking. And again, a lot of this, I was brought up in a family who ate well and my parents were never intense worker outers, but like my dad, he always goes for a walk. He goes for a walk every day, weather permitting, every day. And so it's, I have the example of how I want to be. And maybe you don't have that, but maybe you can be that person. It is helpful to have someone that you see doing what you want to do. That's especially why like when I go, I like going to the gym to work out because I have other people who are striving for something similar. We're both, we're, we're both, all two of us, we're all there to work out. So it's an encouragement. It's not like I can go and be like, Eh, I'll just kind of like, you don't just go there and not do something. You're like, oh, this is encouraging being around other people who are doing what I'm doing. But sometimes you have to walk the, the road alone. And that's why it's so important to have a why. Why are you doing this? And I'll come back to where I started. Your body, your body is everything. Your body goes everywhere with you. You cannot do things if your body is not well. You, you're, you're not the most functional person person if your mind is not well and your diet and being active affect that they affect not only your mind your your body but your mind too so what's your why everyone knows they should eat well and move their body but it's making the decision to do it and getting out of this short term like it's just easier to just sit on the couch it is been there. It's easier to just lay in bed for an extra hour instead of getting up a little early. It's easier to just throw the ball for the dog, which there's nothing wrong with, nothing wrong with, than take the dog and yourself for a walk. 
go for a walk with your family. Go for a walk with your friends. Go for a walk with your boyfriend, girlfriend. doesn't have to be a big thing. Just stay active. Keep moving your body. But if you're watching on YouTube, drop me a comment and tell me what's your why. Even if you're not there yet, even if you're not at the disciplined state, disciplined stage of I am making the healthy food choices. I am making the decision to move my body on a regular basis. Even if you're just, you're getting to that point, you want to make the good food choices. You want to move your body. Tell me why in the comments. Everyone has a why. It might just be for you, but it might be for everything in your bubble that you affect everything that you are responsible for or partially responsible for. Tell me why. What is your why to eat well and move your body? If you are listening to this on podcasts and you want to get involved in the why in the comments, I will leave a link to the YouTube video down below in the show notes for you guys. Thank you so much for being here today and I will see you guys in the next episode.